I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, how to claim a portion of the six plus billion dollar settlement from Visa MasterCard. This webinar is brought to you by Renewed, the open network for specialized subscription, membership, and event professionals. My name is Stephanie Wilford, and I'm your host for today's event. During today's presentation, everyone should be on mute, if you're unable to hear or see the presentation or you have other technical issues, you can private message me through the chat and Zoom. If you have questions for today's speaker, you can submit them throughout the presentation as well as at the end during the live Q&A using the chat feature. After the presentation, you'll have access to the slides and the recording and you'll receive an email once that's posted. So on to today's session, I'd like to first introduce Jim Muntz. He's the founder of Dealers Edge. Dealers Edge provides relevant and actionable resources to assist managers at auto dealerships. Jim has been working closely with Brownstone Recovery Group to help business owners claim a portion of the Visa MasterCard settlement that we'll be discussing today. And he'll be introducing our speaker and will also be available for questions as well. So Jim, please go ahead. Hey, thanks folks. Listen, for those of you who know me, you know this is my, my usual role, but uh, some interesting things Think interesting things happened about four months ago. Uh, a longtime friend, a friend in the automobile business, uh, contacted me, and his first words were, "What do you know about Visa and Mastercard settlement?" I said, "Well, nothing." And then I uh, got an education, and uh, the education is uh, he and Ken, by the way, are, are, are longtime friends as well. So we were longtime friends by association, I guess. But anyway, he explained to me what was what what he was doing, and uh, he was introducing these uh, these settlement services to his clients, and he wanted to know if I was interested in doing the same. Uh, what caught my interest was that the the majority of auto dealers he talked to had no idea what he was talking about, and auto dealers in particular have a, a huge exposure in this area and a huge opportunity to collect, but they, they literally had no idea. Their accountants weren't telling them, their consultants weren't telling them, their associations weren't telling nobody was telling them. So he convinced me that uh, I could do the same thing for my clients. Uh, because I've got an entree to car dealers, they, for good or bad, they listen to me. And, uh, and when I told them about this, uh, a lot of their initial, uh, Skepticism went away. Now the skepticism is understandable. Uh, many, many years ago, I got a letter in the mail from uh, some attorneys that were suing the airlines for price fixing, very similar to the Visa MasterCard thing. And they wanted my cooperation in order to join the suit and benefit from the payout. And uh, we spent weeks, because I was doing a lot of traveling back then, Weeks putting together big schedules of trips that I took, what I paid for them, where I went, what airlines I flew, on and on and on. It was a lot of work. And in the end, when it, when the payout came, I got a book of coupons that would allow me to get discounts for future flights. In other words, I had to spend more money to get back the money that they overcharged me. Uh, that's not the case in this situation. And as a result, and the, and the fact that the, you know, can let me know that the money is available now. Excuse me, the money is on deposit now. Uh, I, I said, sure. And uh, especially since there was no cost involved. But as a result, we became an agent for, uh, for Brownstone uh, to market it to primarily our, our, our business contacts and their car business uh, very successfully. Uh, but the, the thing that, that it still strikes me is every day, every time I, I pick up and open an email, I've got another one that had no idea that this was going on and the amount of money that someone's involved. Now, I'm going to introduce you to Ken Stubb, and he's going to take over and, and give you the, uh, the big pitch. He's been doing this for a lot longer than I am and has uh, more details than I do. But uh, he'll give you the background and uh, tell you what the deal is. One thing you need to remember, by the way, you don't have to use a third-party service. That's something that you, the, uh, the court is very picky about. They want to make sure that you know that you can do this yourself if you want to. And uh, there, there are pluses and minuses to that, and I'm sure Ken will describe them to you. So Ken, it's all yours. 
Thank you. Um, that, that was uh, that was that was another uh, tremendous introduction from that side. I want to pick up on a theme and then I'll jump right into the slides. Um, I, and I'll answer any questions also that come up too. Brownstone has a unique focus on this. Uh, we literally uh, are, are, are li relying on our differences, why we're different in the industry. Um, we started our business plan by saying it's not hard to be a good guy in the Visa MasterCard delivery services. Uh, it, there's a lot of edges to that, that entire business line. This is the second time that Visa and MasterCard have lost a major class action. And most people don't know that. Uh, following up on what Jim said about how uh, people aren't aware of it, a lot of that is because that industry is comprised of very large banks that sub their, their work out to smaller ISOs regionally that go all the way down to whoever your local agent or local contact is. And if you think about it, they didn't have any interest in really pushing this and making a big deal out of it when it was first brought out. Um, the money was set aside because the judge saw at this point what happened in the first case. In the first case, there was a lot of money at the end of the period that was closed off that was never distributed. And a lot of it went back to, uh, back to Visa MasterCard. A lot went back to the lawyers and the fund was eventually dissolved. This is set up completely differently. And I'll get into the details on that in a second. This is set up so that 100% of the money goes to the eligible merchants. Uh, having said that, that's why, or, or when, we, when we discovered that, that's why Brownstone was formed. We have one product and we're doing that deliberately so that we can build a brand based on being the good guys, for lack of a better term. The one product is connecting merchants to their opportunities to collect this money. It's basically a recovery of, of fees that you were charged uh, based on their lack of competition, monopolistic practices. It's, that, it's just that simple. Uh, it's been out there for a while. We'll show you a timeline that is obnoxious in its detail, but the flow gives you a really good feeling for why now's the time to really take advantage of it. Uh, one last thing before I jump into these slides, Jim said it very well. You don't have to use Brownstone. You don't have to use a third party. You can file it yourself, and I'll show you the official claim site, uh, although a form, the final form and the deadline have not been published yet. You can go to that site and see all the detail that you ever wanted, plus some, uh, and make those decisions yourself. I hope I gave you compelling reasons not to invest that time or, or partner with us. It's a smarter way to do business, but open to any questions again, any challenges also as we go through this. We're, I'm not gonna read you an outline of what our highlights are, but I think this was published earlier as to what we're gonna cover. Just the background very quickly of how the case got to where it is now. Uh, and then we go right into who's eligible, what eligibility defines. And that's the piece that I agree with Jim on. I don't understand why the agents out there aren't bringing that to the attention of every merchant and why the associations are coming back and saying, this is an awful lot of money at a time in our economy when different size businesses of all, of all sizes could really use the shot in the arm. We'll go through that piece, and I think you'll be ha very happy about what the net result is of eligibility. Uh, we'll touch very briefly on Brownstone's advantages. The bottom line is we don't do the cliched things. We don't charge upfront fees. Uh, we don't require you to send us 400 pounds of statements. We really don't want them and don't need them. Uh, we will have access to that data and have over 30 years worth of working with the algorithms to make this simple and make it complete. Uh, and lastly, we cover everything that's out there. Everything that we do is under a fixed canopy. It's under a fixed number that says that if we have to work 200 hours to make it perfect, that's fine. If we work 20 hours to make it perfect for your settlement, that's fine too. But we don't charge extra. We don't charge you for a stamp and then having to lick it. And there's none of those games. It's full disclosure. And lastly, we'll touch on the enrollment process, how easy it is and how we link that enrollment process to communicating with you, to keeping you abreast of this so you don't have to hunt down answers and ask over and over again what the status is. Um, and then we've worked out an estimate process. Even though the court has yet to come up with a final formula, and part of that is a catch-22, part of that is because most of these class actions are based on how many people are gonna submit. In the first case, less than 3%, literally 3%, of the total eligible merchants 
ever ever submitted, ever collected any money from. And that's because it wasn't advertised. It wasn't publicized and they weren't told how easy it is. There's a slide that we'll go over at the end that'll probably hit some exposed nerves on you uh, where people think I, I'll never collect anything worth my time on that. They want obtrusive data. They want to get into the weeds. It's too complicated. This only works for the banks and for the private equity groups and for big people. There are a hundred different reasons not to do it. Uh, there's, there's one overriding reason to do it. And that is you have no risk, you have no requirements. And for a very reasonable fee, you can participate in recovering money. You should never have had to pay them in the first place. That's, that's the, whole, the whole combination of one shot. And then lastly, we'll go over the timing. This has been around for literally 15 years. It has changed three or four times. The original decisions have been morphed. It was delayed a tremendously long time because the very large merchants, Target, uh, Walmart, Walgreens, uh, the airlines, Jim, as you said, all of the really big players that use MasterCard and Visa cut separate deals. They went back to the lawyers and the lawyers have been paid in my opinion, uh, an obscene amount of money for the last 15 years to basically rubber stamp the same solutions for those large guys. The good news is the big merchants didn't take a lot of money out of the original $7.5 billion. They, they took some, but they really got better deals. And the smaller merchants got uh, squeezed again because the big guys got better fixed interchange prices and a solution with MasterCard Visa, but the merchants weren't paid. Well, now we're at the end of that run. The judge has stamped this case as being fair and adequate, has publicly said, I mean, there's a, there's a, a press release, this came out in December of last year that said, there's nothing preventing us from moving forward into the payment phase on this. There's administrative issues as there always are, but none of those administrative issues are large enough to derail making these payments. We were headed full steam into the payment, the, the whole payment phase piece of it when COVID knocked on our door and showed up for everybody. Uh, they still have not recovered from that from the courts to the actual processors. I'll answer questions on that also because it could be 30 days from now, it could be six months from now when the court comes back and says, this is the date that everyone gets cut off if you don't have your your early enrollment, which is all we're doing right now is enrolling you, getting you ready for it, and the announcement of the final formula and form to use. No one has that, has any of that right now, it, but it could be that fast. Um, background wise, I just gave you all of this, so don't worry, you don't have to read it. Uh, if you want to read it, Jim and I have, have worked on a, a updated newsletter where we'll share this detail or you can go to any of the websites that I'm gonna be showing you too. The biggest thing that I wanna reiterate is this, this is truly found money. This is not anything that you have to go back and earn. It's not anything that is highly taxed. It's not uh, complicated to get involved in it. Everything that we went over so far makes this a very simple process, which generally intimidates people. Generally, people will say, if it's really that simple, I'm missing something. Well, you're not. And we'll show you that as we go through this piece of it. Again, there's no upside for MasterCard or Visa in keeping the money. There's no money. The money has been segregated into an escrow account 15 years ago and has earned interest and the interest goes to the bottom line. That will be distributed to, until the zero balance is there. Right now, it, it looks as if there's somewhere between 10 and 15% by our best guesstimate of the merchants that are eligible, eligible for this that have enrolled. So even though Brownstone and other companies have tried to make it more visible, there's still not a huge amount of merchant participation. What will happen at the end, if the total amount of enrollments are less than what the total amount of the, of the funds are, they will do a second wave of checks by determining what your percentage ownership as a group. So when the date comes and it cuts off enrollment, that creates another class or a subclass that will get paid. We're estimating that we've got quite a few clients that are going to get a larger second check because of their participation and because they took the time to enroll than they will the first check. So that's something else to, to consider as you're going through this. Option one, this is just the master list of what you can do. Do nothing and you get nothing. 
This is not a typical class action where they will announce that there are checks pending. And if you complete this particular paperwork, then you're going to get a minimum payment. This requires you to pre-enroll. It requires you to raise your hand. And a lot of that is, is based on taking it to a zero balance. They will freeze the group when that date is announced by the courts and say, in 90 days, everyone will be cut off. No one else can enroll beyond that time. We wanna be well ahead of that. There's no cost or risk in enrolling now. And there's very much upside in, in not procrastinating, waiting till the last minute and missing the window. Number two, you can do it yourself. Um, I like to jokingly say that, and Jim and I were laughing about this, you can also do get a home appendectomy kit if you want to do that. You can file your own taxes, but if your taxes are complicated, you probably need a pro to do it. We looked at that as the upside of saying it's so complicated, it's going to intimidate people away from, from doing anything. So we made it simple. We, we, we made that piece of it very easy. Um, but I, I feel very good about telling you, don't believe me. I'm, I'm Ken, the sales guy. I'm the director of sales and, and one of the founders of this company. I want you to make a decision that you're comfortable with us because we are the best in this group. Go to paymentcardsettlement.com. Look at that website. You'll see the type of uh, details and data that they have out there and what will be more than likely required for the filing. And then you can make your decision. Uh, I think that's played very well for us in the past when people come back very quickly after looking at that site. And then lastly, Brownstone would like to do the work for you. There are other players. There are other players. And many of the merchants that we've worked with have come back to us, uh, back to Brownstone and said, I think I signed up with somebody four years ago or five years ago, but I haven't heard from them in a while. So Brownstone took the high road as, as we wanted to do with all of this and said, if you're concerned that you may have signed up with someone else, sign up with us anyway. And if they resurface, or if you find them, or if you identify their website, and it's a legitimate player, and you're comfortable doing that, we will release you without fee, without restriction, and without delay from the Brownstone contract that you sign. The reason we're doing that is because we think it's better to be safe, to have on a belt and suspenders, at the same time than it is to assume they're going to come back and not sign up for this. We would rather take that risk. And again, we're developing a brand for the long haul, not just this one case. We want to exceed everybody's expectations in our performance here and establish a new way of doing business in this channel. This is our website. Uh, it was based, number one, on education, on giving you more than, than what you need, giving you actionable items in there that'll take you through questions you may not even think about right now, but it's written almost in, an, in a progressive Q&A format. Uh, the list that's over here to the right that's got few, you know, frequently asked questions and different forms, and here's the long form from the court, which will make you absolutely bleary-eyed, I promise you. Here's the short form, et cetera, et cetera. We put all that information in there, and we've got a customer service group that's behind this that'll answer any questions. Um, take the time after we finish this call and just look through how, how those applications can help you from this side. We actually will have walkthroughs in there too. If you're not totally sure about swipe fees or the difference between swipe fees and interchange fees, there's a, a great educational section in there. At, at, at some point, I think you're going to make the decision, I, I would just as soon focus on my day-to-day -day business as I would take the time to become an expert here. Our process is very simple. The enrollment part, and it's hard to see. I apologize for that, Jim. You were right. I should have blown this up larger. It's hard to see, but the form that we ask you to start with is very, very simple. The original form just says, tell us about your company, who the authorized signer is, the address, um, and then basically your tax ID number. And we do that in, in short stages, all of it electronically, but do it on purpose because if we ask too much data on the front end, you wouldn't be comfortable with how we do the full enrollment. And we don't really need anything other than this one signed form that we'll send back to you, which is a very short form of, of, of power of attorney for lack of a better term, that once that's signed, we can negotiate for you. But only for this particular case. That's one of the top questions we get. 
I don't want to sign my children's class action capacity off or my grandchildren. You're not. You're not doing anything with your company other than saying, I want this covered effectively, 100%. The enrollment piece is very elegant in another way too. And that's why we've partnered uh, with, with, with people like Jim and with, with Dealer's Edge is because I can't, it's, it's unfathomable to think that I could establish the trust that he has, that he's built up as his business in any reasonable amount of time, particularly before the end of this distribution comes up. So we said trading that trust for the, his trust in how we're going to do business is critical from that side. And we gave them volume support, volume discounts. One of the cautions I throw you is when you go to our website, you'll see a hundred different boxes, almost to the obnoxious point of here, you know, sign up with Brownstone, click this box, sign up with Brownstone. You can do that. And the standard fee that's charged out, out to the universe and through our website is 30%. Jim has a 20% discount that he has shared across the board. So when he gives you the link, use that link, just click on it. You can see the information that's out there. It's very simple to do, but that's a significant discount that is afforded through that channel. You can sign up on our website, but I promise you it will be more money. It'll be 30%. Once all of that is, is, is connected, we get an electronic signature from you. We are then empowered. We send you a confirmation back and you're set up to get communications going forward. What's happened with the case? Is there any progress, anything new or different? Uh, we will come back to you and check in even if nothing has happened um, because courts tend to take a lot of time. It's one of those things that you can take off of your list, not have it hanging over your to-do uh, lists in the back of your head and be comfortable with it at that point. And then lastly, when the courts pull the trigger, you'll get an email that says, these are the dates they gave us. Here is the form. We're going to give you a copy. You can look at it. This is what we're completing for you. We are now getting into the discovery phase. So if we have all of your merchant ID numbers uh, that really are driven from the, the tax ID number, but if we have all of that, great. If you've discovered more, Great, send them to us. It doesn't change our pricing any, it doesn't change the work we do for you. But once we get that, we will file very aggressively. When it's filed, the courts are supposed to give us feedback that says, we've got it, you did it correctly, which is one of the risks you have if you do it yourself. They can reject a form. So if you plan to do it yourself and you do it well, fantastic. If you make a mistake, you have to get that corrected and returned to the processor before the deadline in order to participate. But we will do those corrections for any client that signs up with us. They will tell us an estimate of what is coming back to you. And we will contact you and say, we think this is good. We think this is fair. We think this is light. We think we should take the gloves off and go back at them because we can do better with that. Or we think they're missing a merchant ID and the decision is yours. If you accept it and we move forward, Everything is done and completed and we make a payment, disclose our fees, everybody's happy and settled. If there's an argument with them, that's what we do. We average about 30 years for all of our employees, 30 years in this business, mostly bank employees, operations, uh, law offices, lawyers, et cetera. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, so we know what's doable and what's not and feel very good about being able to give you good information on that. Uh, lastly, we're going to jump in. It's not lastly, but it's, but it's, I think, one of the most important sections. And Jim helped me craft this to make this easy. Um, and of course, I threw an analogy on top of it. We have a lot of caveats that say, we're going to show you an estimate. We're going to show you how to calculate your own estimate. But this estimate is based on really a lot of educated guesses, a lot of, a lot of data that we've pulled together for the last seven plus years. Uh, it's based on court comments. It's based on what the lawyers have said. It's based on payments in the past. But none of this is a fixed fee yet. It's not a fixed amount or fixed formula until the judge comes out with it and it is recorded in the court. But we feel we can get you safely into the stadium that, that you're going to be in, safely into the section that you're in, comfortably which row it is, but we may not be able to tell you exactly what seats. That's the way to look at it. This should get you comfortably in there. And then again, everything that we're doing is based on our experience, the court's disclosures, 
and the things that make sense to us as far as the three or 400 different cases we've handled in the past. It's very simple. If you take your annual yearly processing, now this is not gross income, it's not total sales, it is just what you paid to Visa and MasterCard. If you take that number and then you, you multiply it by your average interchange rate and using a recent year, the, the courts have said, the comments that came out were, they in calculating this, each merchant is probably looking at a refund of 30 to 40% of their total fees they paid in a typical year. A typical year could be the last three years, the last five years. That has to be defined too. The great point though is, depending on how many people respond, that there's a multiplier effect. So if you've been in business for 15 years, there's going to be a multiplier effect that'll come on top of the one year estimate that you're looking at until they distribute all of the money. So what we encourage people to do is just take that one year estimate, know what you're looking at, know what, what, what is a bird in the hand for lack of a better term and calculate it out. We've done it here for you, assuming a half a million dollars in Visa and MasterCard, 2% equates to, to $10,000. You drop down here and you say, and we did this conservatively because it's, going, it's the range that they're hinting is between 30 and 40. So we calculated it at the low end at 30%. We subtracted the 20% fee that we're having down here. You as a merchant would recover for that one year, $2,400. Brownstone's fully disclosed, fully, fully um, encapsulated fee is $600 for, for providing that. Then you can calculate it and see what are, your, what, what are you hoping for? What is the next best thing that could happen? You're going to get... 100% of that for every year that you've been in business, or depending on how many people have responded, you might get 80% uh, or 80 cents on the dollar for every year that you've been in. In any event, it'll show that multiplier effect. Now, the next page is just estimates that we threw out there. On 100,000, a quarter million, half a million, you'll, you'll see how that, how that just tracks out. That really is more to be consistent with everything that we've done as far as the, the conjecture as far as getting you an estimate, because the number one reason that we've gotten over the last five to six years from people not signing up, even though there's no risk of the data being misused, misplaced, when Brownstone is finished with this, you get a certificate that says any data that we used or touched or managed to do your filing has been destroyed or returned to you per your request. We're very clean in that regard. So even though there's no risk in this and there's no challenge for you to come up with all the algorithms and factoids that you need to, to, to fill out the forms that are out there, it's a pretty safe bet. It's a pretty easy way to move forward by looking at this and saying, I think I'm in that ballpark of 700 bucks or net net, you know, if I'm doing a half a million, $3,500 per year, that's a no risk, easy process and, and move forward with it. I'll say, probably two more times or three more times. You do not have to use us though. You have the opportunity, you have the ability to try and do it yourself. This is the, the slide I told you was so obnoxious and maybe that's understated, Jim. It is, it, it, there's so much detail in there that explains why it's been procrastinated, why it's dragged out as long as it has. You can ignore all of that basically and look, just look at two things and that's to the far right. Number one, in this industry, and, and this is for all of our employees that we have, and it's for all of our experience, that's, that's seven or eight of the top 10 banks, things, you know, very good experience. Anytime the judges in the past have declared a case or a case of solution, fair and adequate, it generally meant that within 90 to 120 days, we're gonna get the next two things. We were gonna get the formula and the form. That has been consistent for some time. People that signed up with us five or six years ago, seven years ago, um, should get a badge or should get something for it. But the reality of it is, if you sign up with us now, you will participate at the same level as anyone that has been patiently waiting for this thing to get past the courts and past the lawyers for all those years. Moving forward, we anticipate something very quickly, as I said, without, without stepping into a bear trap myself. We expect it quickly. 
we certainly expect it within a year. So we are clearly in the payment phase of this. The waiting, I think, is over for all intents and purposes. There's another, another slide with too much detail, and I'll spare you the reading because we're going to make this available to you. All of the, the reasons not to do it have solid reasons to do it behind them. Most of it are the cliches. Most of it are what Jim said. When you open up that envelope and you and for, for a typical class action, you're overwhelmed by the detail that you have to that you have to fill out. And then there's a paper trail requirement that says you need to show a statement or give evidence of a statement uh, without boring anyone on this. A lot of the financial institutions are, are subject to Sarbanes-Oxley rest restrictions, which say they have to provide the information to you. That's not really forthcoming on that side. It's very hard to get. To a large degree, it's moot because you don't have a paper trail requirement here. We will access the database. We will have access to be able to get into the weeds and hopefully discover data that you might not even remember having out there. Um, if you go around the clock, though, you say these things never pay out. They don't pay you know, the little guys from that side. Well, in this case, that, that doesn't make any sense. You have no risk, no expense whatsoever in filing for this. So it's a win-win. Even if you're only doing $10,000 a year, it's enough for lunch. If, you know, if you're doing 100 or 200,000, it might be the office Christmas party or it might be enough to pay some employees. But bottom line is there's no reason not to recover the money. And, and not to move forward with it. Um, the big guys always win, of course. That's true with basically anything where our lawyers get involved with. And uh, again, that's my personal opinion more than anything else. But we found a way to make it fair to level the field. We will get the forms done. We will get them in on a, in a timely manner. And that $6 billion is $6 billion that should be in the hands of the merchants right now. That's what our focus is. Um, personal data, any kind of exposures, absolutely not a chance of that happening. We only use the data on, and it's segregated uh, in our operating system to where it can't be shared with anyone else. It is not used to cross examine anyone else. A question came up last week, which I thought was very good. And I was surprised I hadn't had it already. And that is, do you ever use an estimate of a similar size company to fill in data that's missing for another company? And the answer is no. It's a great thought, but that's not what we do. I think the IRS does that to estimate taxes. That's not what we do. The two data fields cannot cross into each other. Um, and then lastly, I think I can do it myself. There are a lot of compelling reasons that for me to go into it now would be self-serving to tell you don't do it yourself. I will tell you the only one that I'm really comfortable sharing with is if you make a mistake in the filing, it can be rejected by the processor and sent back to you and then the burden is on you solely to find that error, correct it, and get it resubmitted in a timely fashion. So on the very end, uh, the one thing that I, that I said earlier was there's a lot of people that think they signed up with someone else or they think that their accountant may have done it or that they remember checking a box somewhere. Uh, be safe, be certain. You can sign up with us. That's a no risk guarantee. If that other entity shows up or if, a different uh, channel that you had gone down resurfaces, we'll take that risk. We think that's fair and we think that's very smart on our side because we'd rather have you enrolled and safe than assuming someone's gonna step up and take care of you. And that, Stephanie, is, is everything. There's a great shot of all of, the, all of the slides. I'm gonna leave those slides open in case someone has a question that you want me to refer back to. And Jim, Jim, I'll defer to you first. Did we cover it the way you want it covered? Oh, sure. You're, you're right on the money. Uh, I have a Duke contact slide if, uh, if you release the screen, but if you want to use it first, that's fine. Uh, let's see if there's any questions and I'll, then I'll gladly release it. Okay. Thank you, Ken, so much. And I just have to say, you probably heard this before, and uh, but to be honest, I was a little skeptical when Jim first mentioned this idea to us because I think we've all, you know, heard the um, stories with class settlements, or you enroll and get five dollars ten years later. And so I wasn't really sure, but when he started describing to me the information and his, you know, his company's role in it, which Jim, as you mentioned, this is. This is not what you do for a living. So um, 
it gave me confidence that you, you know, you had really vetted this, that, that Brownstone seems to know what they're doing, and Ken, your presentation really did um, explain this very well. And and thank you for that. And the, the non legalese complicated way, <laughs> it, it kind of made it make sense. So, um, but yeah, I think I think this is really interesting. One question that I had, and I saw that it came up in the chat as well. Uh, and I encourage others, if you have additional questions, you can post in the chat, or if you want to unmute yourself and just say it out loud, if it's easier to describe that way, that's perfectly fine too. Um, but on your estimate slide, so that is that an estimate per year? And if you were using Visa MasterCard the entire 15 years, so would that be times 15? That's that's the, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's the most, um, Fair. I don't even know grammatically if that's the correct way to say it, uh, but that is that should be your immediate reaction to it, uh, Stephanie. When you look at this, um, here, let me open it up the full way. This is oh, these are the estimates. Hold on, I want to go to the screen that shows you how the calculation works. This is for one year. Okay, this is an estimated recent year, and we believe me, we pushed very very hard for this, and we sat on this model for probably literally for six months because we didn't want to mislead anybody um, for two reasons. One, the court has been very aggressive in protecting merchants and protecting the field. Uh, they haven't been aggressive in getting the payments out, but been very aggressive with third party companies like Brownstone if they mislead the merchants. And I, we're very glad for it. I actually asked the judge one time if we could get a good housekeeping seal, and he told me not to push my luck. Uh, but the but the reality of it is they're very protective. So we wanted to make sure we had something that they, you know, literally it was solid steel. You couldn't change it. This is for one year. Make the calculation. Do your own estimates yourselves. Run it, run it through. Estimate it for the one year because the one year is the safest bet you have right now. I, I imagine everyone on the phone. Uh, either tried or looked at the Equifax settlement. And Equifax came out and said, oh, everybody's going to get $280 per person in your household and the whole bit. And the net check that I got was $8.11. And so I'm assuming that's what happened to the country. Uh, that's an example of overestimating it. The reason I use that kind of corny analogy about here's, where, here's which stadium, here's the section in the stadium, here's the row, is good. That's a safe way to look at it because if we said you're going to be between these seats, that would encourage you to spend the money. Oh, I'm getting this check back. I know I'm getting this back. I know it's going to be this much money. I'm going to go buy that convertible from Jim. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Not even close. The estimate for one year is your safe bet, but it is your multiplier. That's why when Jim and I have, have talked in the past, and then one thing very quickly too, Stephanie, we're very selective about who our partners are. We didn't just open this up to the world. I've gotten that question before. People say, wait a second, Ken, why are this number still low? This seems to make great sense. Why wouldn't everybody have that? Because we don't want everyone selling it. We want people that are going to follow exactly what I just said. So when you go back to this and I say, take that one year, and it could be the last average of the last three years. It could be the delta of five years, whatever you think is, a, is an indicative average. And the reason for why we do it this way is you choose the average because there are some people that may have been really, really hot with their business and they have a bell curve for, for what happened with the business and then it's flattened out for them for, the, for X many years. Well, the average year, again, the courts have not clarified this, but you can mathematically deduct this, an average year for someone who's been doing this for 15 years and their spike was back here is still going to reflect a higher average than what the last two or three years. So we just say, do it yourself. You think about this, you know, your business better than anyone. Um, and choose this as an average year, then calculate it against the number of years that you were in business, but don't expect that check. Just know that's your greatest upside, that that's the, that's what the hope is at the end of this. Go back to the first case, 3%. I don't know, I, I struggle with saying three for whatever reason. 3% is, a, is an abysmally low number. I don't know how many merchants are gonna participate in this. I know that if they pull the trigger quickly, we're not anywhere close to where, where those, those numbers become an issue. Jim, is that a fair answer? Oh, uh, sure, it's, it's gonna be spread over the, the entire term you were in business. 
Because this also applies to businesses that are not currently in operation. Correct. So, you know, whatever the average is for your, your time of business. Another caveat on the averages is then that we found this true in, in our business that uh, 10 or 12 years ago, we probably accepted a lot more um, American Express than we did Visa and MasterCard. Exactly why that split is, I don't know, but the, the, you know, the American Express charges don't apply. No, not yet. I, I don't, yeah. I, I see Ed's, Ed's question about the 25%. The fee is 20% if you if you come through Dealer's Edge. We negotiated the 20% rent with, uh, with Ken for anybody we bring in. Yeah, I think there's a, in the header there, it says 25% fee and then- oh, oh, no. That just cost me a very expensive dinner with Jim, you guys. I missed that. <laughs> it's, oh, no. Okay, thank you whoever pointed that out. Um, we're it's talking funny. to a lot of publishers. We're editors by background, so. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, okay. so thank you, and thank you for clarifying that. Uh, so we have a couple more questions coming in the chat, and I'm trying to like manage them while you're also talking. So I apologize if I ask something that you've already answered, but just for the sake of clarity. Um, so uh, one question: When you're talking about how to calculate the estimate, is that an average that we like as the merchant supply to you or that you help us determine? Um, is it a judgment call that we're making? Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that? I know you just kind of went into that. But this sure, there's a difference between what we're gonna file and what your estimate is now. What we thought as, as Brownstone, you know, when we first started doing this, it was 10 times harder to convince people that we had something that was gonna change all of those cliches that, that were out there. Um, and we couldn't give any estimates. And we got to the point and got comfortable with what we were doing to where we could create these estimates. But the estimates are not how we file. We'll file against your data, against your actual data. So we'll be able to pull what's out there. To Jim's point, if there's businesses that have closed, we'll try to find because everything that we do drives off of the tax ID number because the tax ID number equates to various merchant ID numbers. So if you have the MIDs, Give them to us by all means. It, it doesn't get you any extra points. It just saves research time. If you don't have them, we are hoping the database, and I say this hoping, because what happened in early in the process is Visa and MasterCard were charged with the responsibility of gathering the data and then making it calculable, make, making it something that could be accessed and used to come up with all these different algorithms and ways to track for a merchant. And one of the things we kept pounding on that, and that was done many years ago, they got it completed, they got it signed off. And this is NASA super protected database that has everything that, that we're going to be able to access, but you have to know how to ask the questions and that sort of thing. But we kept pounding saying, if we have one merchant ID for related to a tax ID number, will that system tell us all of the related sisters and brothers and whatever else? And we have never gotten a good answer on that. Logic would tell you that's the way it should be. Logic would tell you that's the way the IRS databases should work too. But I don't know if any of you have access to the IRS's databases. I don't. I've got to pay for my taxes each year. So we're, we're not going to rely on them to supply that. We're going to be able to manipulate the database that way. But we will be able to put like kinds together, be able to look at addresses and be able to look back and say intelligently. Because again, and, and for the record, we handled the first case as well. The guys that constitute the core of Brownstone did the first case. We know the tricks. We know, we know what we need to do. We'll go try to find those, Stephanie. I, there's no guarantee that we'll find them. But by doing this against one year, against you know, what you think is, is appropriate, allows you to kind of control those variables. If you look back on it and you say, well, I also have this other company, it may not even be related to what you're doing. We have a lot of clients that just without being facetious, they were in the candle business and now they're doing pizzas and they sold the other division or they lost it to a bankruptcy or it was consolidated. Those don't matter. It's based on the fees paid underneath that merchant ID number. It really is that simple and we'll find it. We'll find it. Okay, so I think that answers one of the other questions is about how do we make sure we're, we aren't under reporting. So it sounds like the estimate is sort of the upfront just to give you an idea 
and yeah. this is the process you've come up with or like here's what we think it'll be but once you actually go to file you're going to get the real data and know for sure this is exactly how much maybe not exactly but pretty close to how much you charge during the eligible period and what your what would be eligible so you're not yeah. guessing at it at that point we wanted to do this for two reasons. One, because it was impossible to get anybody excited if they didn't see that there was upside to this. You know, if they thought they were going to get, you know, 10 cents in the dollar or whatever, a lot of people would say, I'm not going to do it. Now, COVID changed that, uh, changed that mentality completely. Um, but the reality of it is it, it's still a, you know, a zero sum game. If you don't file, you get nothing. You know, if you do file, then you'll get something is, is the way you should look at it. We thought that was number one. We thought we got to give our, our participants, um, our clients, for lack of a better term, we got to give them some kind of feel of what they should be expecting, which leads to the second reason. Because then when we're down to saying, wow, based on the information that we got from you and what we're looking at, um, they're coming back and telling us you're going to get an $8,400 refund. We think it should be closer to 12000 we would like to fist fight with these guys. We would like to, to go back at them and push for other, other issues and things along those lines, but it's your decision, client. So if you're ABC client and they come back to us and they say $8,400 or whatever, we will tell you that. And then if you say, take it, it's $8,000 more than I thought I was going to get, let's do it. That's your call. That's the client's call. If we come back and say, we think we can keep digging, we can keep pushing on that. It doesn't cost any more money. It's not gonna delay any time frame. We're not gonna put your, the settlement at risk uh, by going back after that. We, will, we just will encourage you based, and again, based on the model that we built, Stephanie, we did this on purpose. You win when we win, we win when you win. It's very, very simple that way. There's no extraneous, oh, we're billing you by the hour for paying attention. And, and there's a lot of crazy setups that are out there. A lot of the competitors that have faded on this since it's taken longer were divisions of law firms or accounting firms, or they were guys in, you know, mobile home units that uh, said, oh, I can make a quick buck on this. And there's no, there was no support or there was no tenure to what they were doing. The judges cleaned them out pretty quickly, but now you still run into these guys that say, well, trust me, I'll do your filing, you know, as easily as I possibly can. Well, yes which doesn't guarantee you the best return, doesn't guarantee you total coverage. We, we will scrub this thing until you say stop. Great, and um, could you go over again what information you require in order for people to sign up initially? And you had a slide that kind of walked through that process, but what do you require up front? It, it's very simple. It's, it's just really the name and address. We can, I can pull it up. Actually, I can pull it up and show you what the, what the form looks like. Let me... Uh, try this if you're okay if i can do this with any skills whatsoever actually i wonder if i can access the internet without throwing this off um because i was just going to go to the to our website let me see if i can do that without too big of a goof up um let's see i got thought that's okay we can we can send the link out um, but it sounds like it's not a lot of information, you know, you don't need no, it's, it's, years it's, of statements and bank information and all that right up front. No, you don't no. need that. Uh, uh, well, okay. Go ahead, Jim, and I'll, 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 I'll pull it up. Re release the screen and I'll give, I'll give them the, uh, the form, my form. Okay. Oh, actually, I will in two seconds because I'm going to show you this form where it says retain brownstone. It really is that simple, Stephanie. Can you guys see that? Uh, I'm still seeing the PowerPoint. Maybe you have it on a different screen. Or... No, here we Might go. Might just be sharing your PowerPoint, not this full screen. I'm going to share, bear with me one second, share the screen. Now it should work. And then I'll give it to you, Jim. Can you guys see that? No, sorry. It's, mine is the same thing, so. Are you seeing PowerPoint, Stephanie? I'm seeing the Brownstone Recovery Group website now. Right, it's great. It's a green page. Yep. Yes. Good. That's that's it. It's kind of hard to see, but it's basically just name, email, company, the title, and the title is is part of that whole uh, empowerment thing. We don't want to, you know, we're very fraud protective from that side, so we just want to make sure who and and to be very honest with you, we'll check, do background checks and stuff, but not detail. We'll just go back and say, okay, that's a legitimate person is signing them up. 
and then phone number and address, et cetera, et cetera. This is the first wave. When this is submitted, then our system automatically generates back to that person a, a very simple, simplified power of attorney that has the company name, the fixed fee, and because we're doing this through Jim, this is this is coming off of here because we're doing it through a hyperlink that that, that Jim has. It'll put in the twenty percent, guarantees that puts in the twenty percent, and then it says here are everything that we ask you to do. You're empowering us to to respond to the courts. You're empowering us to negotiate for you. We will come back and communicate everything with you. We will not settle until you say it's a go. That's it. That's what you're signing. And then once that is signed and it's signed electronically, then we send you a very nice note, very nicely written note that says, you're good to go. You are safely behind that wall. So regardless of when the court pulls the trigger, if it's next month, if it's next early next year, whatever, you are safe and you, will, you are here to participate or you are so comfortably participating. Great. Okay. It looks like there's one more question that we haven't covered yet. So I'm going to ask everybody to, if, if this is not your question and we didn't get to yours, if you could repost it, because I think we've gone through all of them now, um, but I might have misunderstood what somebody was asking. So please do repost if, if we missed your question. The only one that I think we haven't gotten to yet is how far back can you go in the recovery process? Um, I'm assuming that means during the time, so it's a, a 2004 to 2019, I believe. That's, that's correct. Awesome. That's so correct. Actually, one, one quick point on that too, Stephanie, is um, the delays have not all been bad. It hasn't, the procrastination, in my opinion, hasn't all been bad because about five years ago, uh, the judge came back and hit them for more money and, and bumped the fees back up. So some of it that had been drained out, he made them replace. And then secondly, he uh, he added the five years to take it to 2019. So the whole concept is to really slap their hand pretty hard. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's done much as far as stopping some of the practices, just being very direct. It doesn't mean anything for this settlement though. The money is there to be collected now. Um, and someone else, another smarter, faster, meaner judge, whatever is gonna have to corral them. But that's where we are. Jim, I, I released the screen. Are you good? Uh, I can't get it to come up, so that's all right. Well, it's I just actually see, looking well, at let's see your slide, Jim, so I think you're good. You good? Yep. Okay, I can't see it, that's all. It's just dealersedge.com slash brownstone, and that'll get you the form. Great, well, that, that seems easy enough. Um, I think this has been, huh? Yeah, yeah. If you have questions, just send them to me. But just by the way, and I'm kind of bragging a little, we've been at this for four months. We've uh, we've signed up about 250 car dealerships, and they, on average, have uh, credit card sales between three and five million dollars a year. Wow. Yeah. Which is why when I make a mistake on the slides, I have to take them out for a steak, not for a hamburger. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for us, it looks like a no brainer and we process uh, probably over $2 million a year in credit cards. So I, I liked your example slide because just doing the math real quick on that makes it seem, um, you know, like a no brainer. So I think this has been really helpful and appreciate you guys taking the time to put this together. And thank you, big thank you to Jim for bringing this to our attention. Um, hopefully the renewed members on the call found this helpful as well. and. You guys do have additional questions. Um, Jim and Ken will be available. Absolutely. We'll be sending out an email with the recording and the slides and their contact information and the link here, the dealersedge.com slash brownstone. So you'll be able to uh, sign up, ask questions, all that good stuff. And yeah, I wanna thank you guys again for presenting. I appreciate your time and thank you for everybody for attending.